Right now I'd like to share with you a real life story that happened to me uh, and how I used physics, specifically statics, to solve an incredible problem. Uh, now the first thing I'd like to share though is that uh, at one point I owned a 37 foot adventure travel school bus that I bought for $2,500 and completely refurbished so that I could take my 25 best friends across the country on several outdoor wilderness adventures. Uh, now I don't recommend doing this yourself uh, unless you don't mind breaking down in the middle of nowhere with 25 people on board and having to figure out what to do with all of them. Uh, that happened to me several times, but on the good side, I did meet my wife by having the school bus. There are easier ways to meet people. However, all that said, uh, I had a great time with the school bus while it lasted. Uh, we refurbished the whole thing. On the interior, we had carpeted interior with removable aisle inserts so you could either sleep or sit on these benches. The adjustable navigation table with a catalytic heater. We had a 15 gallon water tank, four 20 pound propane tanks, which fed the sink and the onboard stove, respectively. We had eight deep cycle batteries, which fed the inverter. Plenty of room below for all kinds of storage, a roof rack. And this school bus lasted from 1998 to 2003. So the real life problem I had to solve was to determine where the center of mass of this school bus was. And the reason you want to do that is because you never want to put a jack at the center of mass. For example, if you jack up the bus at the center of mass like this, and then someone puts loads something on the bus so that the maybe the other side of the bus is a bit heavier, then boom, the bus slams down on the other side, and actually you could get injured with that situation. So you don't want your jack anywhere near the center of mass of the bus. How to figure that out? Well, along the side of the highway, there's numerous way stations. What we found out when we pu pulled into that way station was that the rear axle weighed 5,000 pounds and the front axle weighed 10,000 pounds. Uh, the other data that I can give you is that the bus was 10.5 meters long and the wheelbase, which is the distance between the front and rear axle, is 7.5 meters. So how to figure out where the center of mass is based on this? Well, one important factor is that what force acts at the center of mass? You could say the force of gravity does. So that's going to help us using static equilibrium to figure out where the center of mass of this bus is and where you should never put a jack. So let's start as we do with all problems and draw a very good free body diagram with the forces shown, the application point shown by where the tail of the arrow is. Well, what is 5,000 pounds of the, at the rear axle? That's actually the normal force at that point. So let's go ahead and draw that in. This is what I'm going to call N1. Make it a little bit shorter. N1 is the normal force caused by that scale that's holding up the rear axle. N2 is this force right there, the 10,000 pound force, that is the normal force on the front axle scale. So I've got those two forces. Are there any other forces? Well, of course we have the force of gravity. Where is that going to act? At the center of mass, but I don't know where that is. I'm just going to pick a random point right here, and I'm just going to call that right there the CM. I don't know where that is, and I'll just say force of gravity acts right there. That is going to be mg. And I don't know where it is, so I'm just going to call this distance x. From the, uh, this location here, uh, right above this, the rear axle right there, uh, to the center of mass, I don't know what that is. Now, I'm just going to call it x. Well, what I call this distance between the center of mass and the front axle? I don't want to introduce another variable, so I'm just going to call it 7.5 minus x, right? Because we know the wheelbase is 7.5. All right, now let's pick a convenient axis to determine the, uh, where that center of mass is. I'm going to choose the rear axle. You could choose anywhere you want. I'm just going to happen to choose the rear axle. Well, that makes it convenient because the normal force 1 and 1 exerts how much torque about that axis? Zero. 
So that normal force one will not even be in my torque equation. What will? Well, the force of gravity will be in the torque equation, so will N2. Let's go ahead and see what those are going to be. I'm going to choose this direction counterclockwise for positive for my, around that rotational axis. And that'll make uh, in the uh, y direction, that'll make up positive. And I'm going to arbitrarily pick to the left as positive for x. Let's go ahead and just start with our torque equation um, because that's usually a good place to start. Sometimes you can solve the whole problem just with that. And actually, this is no exception. So I'm just going to write the net torque about, and I've chosen that axis, star, about the star axis, is going to equal zero. And you get a point just for writing that. Now let's go ahead and get a little bit more specific about these torques. I'm just going to list all the possible torques. So that could be the torque due to N1 plus the torque due to N2 plus the torque due to gravity, and those got to add up to zero. Now, as already previously mentioned, because we've chosen this rotational axis right here, the normal force one goes right through that. The line of action of that force goes right through that point, so the lever arm is zero. So this exerts no torque. The, there's no torque due to N1 about that axis we've chosen. How about for N2? Well, here is the R value from there to there. Uh-oh, I don't know how high up off the ground that bus is. As it turns out, I don't need that. I just need the lever arm. I just need the shortest route of transportation from the line of action of N2 to the axis of rotation. So here is the lever arm. I'm going to call that D2, the lever arm for N2, which is acting right there. Again, all I got to do is just take the line of action of N2, which goes through like that, find the shortest route of transportation back to the axis of rotation. That's D2. In general, the torque can be calculated by DF. And in this situation, that is very specifically D2 times N2. But N2, we already know, is 10,000 pounds. All right, there is our torque due to N2, and that is positive because it would cause a, that force alone would cause a counterclockwise rotation. Last that we have left is the torque due to gravity. Now let's try to figure out what our R value would be here. R displacement from axis of rotation to point of force application is that R for gravity. We don't know the height of the bus. Luckily, that doesn't matter. The lever arm comes to save us again. You see how important this lever arm is? So what's the lever arm for this force? Here's the line of action of this force. Goes all the way down that way and all the way up that way. What's the shortest route of transportation back to the axis of rotation? It's this. This is the lever arm, which I'm going to call D sub G. It's the lever arm for the force of gravity. Shortest route of transportation from line of action to axis of rotation. So, and this force would cause a clockwise rotation, so it's going to be negative torque, and that'll be dg times mg, which we don't know yet, but let's, let's put down mg. And that is all the torques we have. That's going to add to zero. Now, still can't solve this quite yet, but it's going to be very simple. So now let's just get a little bit more specific here. D2, we already know. That's the wheelbase. The distance between front and rear axles is 7.5 meters. So I'm going to go ahead and just plug in some numbers here. So you can see where I'm going with this. 7.5 meters times 10,000 pounds minus, what is DG? The lever arm for the force of gravity. Hey, that was the X that we originally stated as x. So that's just x, our unknown, and that's what we're trying to find out. How far from the rear axle is the center of mass, x. What is mg? Well, just by looking at this, we could set up a new equation, the net force in the y direction, but we can actually, uh, let's cut that short, and just look at it and figure out what is mg. 
Well, the upward forces are 5,000 pounds at the rear axle, 10,000 pounds at the front axle, and mg down, those all have to add to zero. So mg must be 15,000 pounds. If you don't see that immediately, you can just go ahead and do your net force in the, x, in the y direction equals zero, and you'll find that, what mg is. And that adds up to zero. Notice our only unknown is what we're trying to find where the center of mass is. And just by solving for that, notice that the pounds will cancel out, leaving your x in meters, and it will tell us where not to put a jack. In fact, just don't put a jack wherever you find that value. No jack here. Put a sign on your school bus that says do not place jack here because that makes it very unstable. A little bit of extra mass will cause it to flip the other way. All right, that's all we have. And hopefully you realize now that this is very, very easy stuff, but you got to review the stuff we did before. All the torques, all the uh, angular kinematics, all that stuff, lever arm especially, review all that stuff so you can be successful at this. Other than that, it's always net force in the x direction equals zero, net force in the y direction equals zero, and net torque equals zero, and you can solve any of these static equilibrium problems. All right, have fun, and I'll see you in the next video.